divine creative power God that has brought us together here in this very moment. We are here joining together with the purpose of reunion. Not only to prove that life is eternal, but also to acknowledge that we are all one and originating from that one source that we call God. We are asking the divine creative power that we are allowed to tap into that moment where those two worlds come together not only for the communion of spirits, the loved ones, but also to gain access to the knowledge and understanding. For us maybe to find something within it that gives us guidance, that gives us that spark of light at that tunnel of despair, that brings hope and eventually happiness into our lives. So allow us to be part of this service, not only with our rational minds, but with our true energy that we carry within. We already send out those healing thoughts, but yet again, we are asking that thy loving light is reaching out to each and everyone within this living world to find the solace that they are seeking, to find that support, that one shoulder to lead and guide them. And those who don't know that there is someone within this world who cares for them, the realization that they will never be alone. These are our thoughts, these are our wishes for this service today, but also when the time has come to allow us to bring the loved ones together and reunite the people with each other, to maybe say hi, to maybe find that encouragement that they are looking for, but also that undoubtedly knowing that life is eternal. With these thoughts, I hand over this service in thy loving hand. May it be a wondrous one. May it truly show us that life lives on. Amen. Well, I chose a reading from the book, The Spiritual Teachings of Marcus Aurelius, who was a Roman emperor. And I thought when reading one of his philosophies, I thought, you know what? Despite being two, almost 2000 years old, it just has a relevance. So it is called, What is the Right Way to Live? Remember that even if you were to live for 3,000 years or 30,000, you could not lose any other life than the one you have. And there will be no other life after it. So the longest and the shortest lives are the same. For this present moment is shared by all living creatures but the time that is past is gone forever. No one can lose the past or the future, for if they don't belong to you, how can they be taken from you? Keep in mind these two things. First, that since the beginning of time, the cycles of creation have shown the same recurring patterns 
So it makes no difference if you live for a hundred years, 200 years or forever. Second, that the person who lives the longest life and the one who lives the shortest lose exactly the same thing. For the present moment is the only thing you can take from anyone since this is all they really own. No one can lose what they do not own. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I thought very wise words. And then what is really incredible. So I think is that 2000 years later, we still struggle the same questions as our ancestors, isn't that incredible? Yet we are living in a society where we believe that, oh, well, we have moved forward, we have evolved, we drive cars, we have convenience, we have hot waters, showers, sewage. And yet in a philosophical sense, how did we progress? How did we really look at philosophical questions of those great thinkers like Plato, for example? A thousand years ago, they were thinking and trying to understand what humankind is, how the human mind works. And what spirit and soul is. And yet, 2000 years later, we still don't really know, do we? We have ideas, but where do we truly have the proof that in one direct voice is telling you the soul is this or the spirit is that? We have ideas, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm asking you, do we truly have the full truth of what that exactly is? And I would say we don't. So does that make me incompetent sitting here and addressing you about philosophy of spiritualism? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Because what is so beautiful within that belief of spiritualism is that we will always grow, that we will never know the whole truth. Isn't that great? And therefore we don't have to be right at all times either. So whew, isn't that a big burden off our shoulders that if a child is asking you, hey mom, dad, god mom, or friend of someone, why is it that the sun shines? And you say, I don't really know. Why is it so difficult for us to admit that we might not really truly understand how life works in its detail? How many times were history books rewritten, ladies and gentlemen? How many times, how many times does science find new approaches, new knowledge that actually makes what we have learned in school nil and void? Nil and void. This is a reality of our world. What you know today, in this present moment might not be true tomorrow. We come across a lot of people because here I'm talking to the converted. I do assume that all of you believe in the world of spirit into the afterlife. Otherwise, I think we wouldn't be here. But yet maybe there was a moment where you didn't believe that there was an afterlife because you didn't need to know. Because people who 
have never really truly lost someone, why would they seek the solace of the knowledge of an afterlife? And can we blame them? No, we can't. If you are one of those who is brave enough to tell your colleagues and, and work associates that you might believe in the world of spirit, that you might be even a medium, and they look at you with big eyes and like, she or he has lost its marbles. Hmm, we need to be a bit careful here. I mean, that's, that's what is happening in the world, isn't it? And I know you must know how that feels, how brave you have to be to say, you know what, I don't just believe in the world of spirit. I know that there is a spirit world. And I know I can't tell you, and I can't really give you scientific proof that the spirit world is truly existent because the evidence lies within you. You are the science, you are the evidence of those people who reside now in the world of spirit. And Iris chose a wonderful song, Imagine If There Is No Heaven. How dare you, Iris, to choose that song? Because we believe in a heaven, don't we? But if we really think of that concept, if there was no heaven, what would that bring at, to our lives in understanding? Because I know that we often think of our people in the world of spirit, they're out there, they're up in the heavens. But yet, if we believe that there is no heaven, then we all of a sudden start to realize, well, they're not up there, they're not over there, they're here, right here, where I, where I am. That then makes you realize that you are, are a torchbearer of the truth, your own unique truth, where you can and allow people to be part of if they are interested in that you never have the duty to convince anybody because you can't, because your evidence is what you feel inside. Your truth, your world is how you see the world. And yet sometimes we see the world quite unrealistic at that as well, guilty as charged. Because sometimes we don't want to look back. Aurelius said it very nicely. You can't lose your past. You can't ignore it. You can tell yourself it never happened, but it has happened. That's the first acknowledgement that we have. Unfortunately, to be very realistic about. We can't eliminate the truth. And therefore, we can't eliminate who we were in the past, what experiences we had in the past, but we have a choice today in how we look at the past, in how we live as the person today. That's our choice. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is not an easy choice. No one ever has promised us that life is easy with its choices. And therefore, sometimes it's really easy to find someone who's very kind to us and makes the choices for us. Because then we might find someone to blame if it doesn't come into being as we like it to be. That's the point. Sometimes life is not as we like it to be. But there we also have a choice. We have a choice to move with what is presented to it. And you and I, we all stood at that crossroad 
where all our wishes and dreams, our future plans, they just dissolve within a second. Within a second, what you have worked for years and years and years to maybe achieve, and there I come back to this reading again, the future is not ours because we don't own it. The only thing that we own is the very moment we live. The very moment. And this is exactly what the spirit world teaches us. The moment you wake up, you have the choice to change the world. You might even have the choice to say, do you know what? I'd like to become a second Mahatma Gandhi because I know that there is something not right within this world and I want to change it. If you ever will. Well, we don't know. It's in the future, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? But the thought is there. And thought as we know and have learned through all those wonderful teachings from the world of spirit is a creative force. And you and I, we can't deny this truth that if we have good thoughts, good things happen. Not always in the moment, I have to say, but what is interesting is that the bad stuff that we envisage comes into being quite, quite quickly. Isn't that true? But maybe because we are focusing so much on the bad things, which we do, that we might have to change our thought pattern. And there is the discipline that this reading really points out. We have to master how we think, what we think, and that's discipline because our mind can easily slip in that mode. I'm such a poor person. Why is it me? Why is it not them? And there you have your answer right now. Why not you? Ladies and gentlemen, why not you? Because maybe something within you is equipped to deal with it to not lose yourself within the process, to not give up on life while you feel destroyed within yourself. When your wishes and dreams are ripped from you. And if we believe, truly believe in natural law, that everything that is sent out is coming back in one or the other way, then why would we hold a grudge towards anyone else? Because we know sooner or later, we have to look at what we have done, what we have created and be the judge of our own doing. So therefore, I want to give you, or it seems inspiration of spirit, wants to give you that release of holding a grudge within you towards a situation or a person or anything that is going on in your life, even your own body that might let you down. You're allowed to let that grudge go. Because in the greater scheme, within that tapestry of the creative endeavor of life, there is a reason for it. And you, ladies and gentlemen, are the perfect one to deal with it, to survive it, and to grow out of it even stronger. 
not just for yourself, but also for the ones you might in the future be of service for. There you can see how important you as the individual are. Without you within this world, it would not be perfect. With you within it, it is absolutely perfect. The past belongs to you. If it wasn't, it would not be your life. It would not have created the person that you are today. The future is not yours. And therefore to think into the future, well, it's nice. It's nice to have goals, achievements, but it's also nice to be flexible, to be adaptable to take every moment that is presented as something that you know you can conquer. You know you can deal with it. And you know you can grow with it to reach new heights of your involvement. involvement. Isn't that great? You only remain a prisoner if you keep the thoughts of imprisonment. You always remain a prisoner if you keep the thoughts of imprisonment. Why would you do this to you? The spirit world doesn't want that to happen and nor the God falls itself. You are present. You are perfect the way you are, which doesn't mean that you can't evolve and become even more perfect. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Divine creative power God, we give thanks that we were allowed and able to bring those two worlds together, not just within that moment where we meet with our loved ones, but also to gain maybe new understanding, support, help through the words of inspiration to take that next challenge within our lives. We give thanks that we know that you will always support whoever is in need and therefore our energy that we have created, we ask to be sent out into this world to help make a difference for people to start realizing that there is much more to life than material aspects that there is love and support and joy in being of service. With these words, I ask last but not least to give us thy blessing, but also the strength and courage to live that present day, to go joyfully into the future, not knowing what will be created, but knowing that whatever will be waiting for us there, we'll be able to deal with, live with, and become happy with. Amen.